Welcome to the Just Action Podcast, where all we do is take action. I'm the one, the only holiday season, and again, we're here for a special reason. We have a legendary man in the building, honored to be here in Atlanta with him, the Ecom King, Support Black Colleges co-founder, the legend himself, man, Mr. Money Man, Justin Phillips. How you doing, bro? I'm doing great, brother. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, real. no, I appreciate you, man. This has been an honor. How's uh, how's life with you, man? How's everything going right now? Everything is good. Business is growing. Mental health is good. Physical health is good. Family's good. Community's good. Everything's good. That's good, How man. about yourself? Are you good? I'm doing well. I'm, I'm actually I'm more than well. I'm excited to be here. You know, right. it's a big opportunity. Um, just to talk to you guys and pick your brain a little bit and see what, what you guys got going on in life. Hopefully I can give you some value. Hey, into that. <laughs> whatever you say, I, I think it's going to be some game for sure. <laughs> good, some game good. for sure. But speaking of, you know, everything being good, and, I, and one of the first things you said, you know, like health was good, and we were talking earlier, you know, you, you're meditating. What's that, that morning workout or routine yeah. for you that you're getting in where you're making sure that you're okay before, you know, you tackle on the day? Yeah, so it's funny because, like, I have different viewpoints about this. I used to, when I first got started, I thought that I had to, like, add a bunch of stuff to my life for yeah. me to be, like, different. So, or, like, me to be, you know, high level or whatever right. you want to say. So, this is how, this is my matriculation. First, I would wake up, work out. After I worked out, I would come back home, take a shower, meditate in the shower. Afterwards, I would write down my goals for my life, top 10 goals. And then on the back of it, I would write down 10 things that I was grateful for. And I would just meditate over my goals and what I was grateful for. And that was like what I did when I first got started into entrepreneurship. And I think that there was like a key thing for me because it allowed me to iron out my goals. It allowed me to even though things were going bad in the journey, find something to be grateful for every day. Yeah. Um, and then just like, you know, maneuver my mind into like being someone that can have these character traits that you need to be a businessman. And now I kind of just like do something similar where I'll work, I'll wake up, work out, come back home, meditate, whatever. And then I kind of just get into the day yeah. and um, also I'll read for an hour, okay. but it's kind of just more so along the lines of like, I do what I feel that I need at the time okay. because I think that a lot of people, a lot of people believe that they need to add a bunch of things to their life to become like these big earners. When in reality, it's not what you add to your life. It's actually, you're doing something that the big earners aren't doing. So you may be watching a lot of TV, watching a lot of negative news, talking badly to yourself in your mind, etc. But the big earner isn't doing those things. So it's not you need to add on a routine of this, a cold plunge of that. Yeah. It's you need to take away all of the nonsense that you're doing to actually become successful. So my thoughts on routines is when you're first getting started, it's mm -hmm. good to give yourself that trait of consistency to build up so that you can have consistency as a business owner. Yeah. But after you kind of get into it, it's like, I do what I need and I get right to work. I and like that. that's pretty much my, my thoughts on the, you know, routine situation. Yeah, I like that. And getting into that routine and then getting straight to work. And you were saying, you know, as the beginning entrepreneur, you needed to develop that consistency. What right. did that look like uh, work wise for you? You know, yeah. becoming a full time entrepreneur, you're not working at a job. So now you're creating this the system of how right. I'm doing work in the morning and what is work for you rather than just being busy. Yeah. How did you develop that system? That's good. And I like that you even said like, you know, being busy because yeah. most people are trying to be busy all day, but they're not very productive. And I kind of liken it to like running in place. Yes, I'm moving, but I'm not moving forward. Right. right? So the way that I did it when I first was getting started is I realized that the difference between someone that's successful and someone that's super successful is not the things that they say yes to, it's the things that they say no to. So it's saying no to everything except for the things that actually make money in the business. So when I first got started, I wrote down what are the three things that make me money in my business? And it was client outreach, client nurture, and like one other thing. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to do that all day for 30 days straight. And that's it. And then I was able to go from $0 to like 5k a month in retainers, managing people's Instagram accounts. Mm -hmm. And I just realized that that was the most important thing. It was, like I said, like there's so many different opportunities that always come like crypto, real estate, investing, stock market, whatever. And you never truly get good at anything because you are trying something for three months. It doesn't make you rich. And then you're like, let me try something else. Mm -hmm. And I kind of call it like the liability loop. So it's like you get some information, you get excited about it. 
you get an opportunity to stay consistent with it. You don't. And then you get sad and then you get information, you get excited about it. You get another opportunity to be consistent. You don't. And you kind of just keep going. And that's kind of like my my I say my matriculation through like being consistent in the beginning. It was finding something staying consistent with it, building that consistency through building those daily habits Mm -hmm. and then not looking at anything else for 12 years. It was very simple what I did to become successful. I chose one thing and I didn't do anything else for 12 years. I like that. And I like that you said that because uh, as we were talking with Jalil, he said the same thing in, in regards to you and giving the high praise of, he said he was doing so much and you guys went on a retreat to Jasper, Georgia, <laughs> and he said, yo, uh-huh. the big thing that stuck with him was he was doing everything. You say you need to focus on one and right. for you to come back and say, that's how I got successful right. of just sticking on one thing and not looking anywhere else for 12 years, hones in on how big that is of just right. finding that one thing. Was there anything... Uh, Prior to you uh, moving into full-time entrepreneurship, I was looking at, you know, doing some research and you were a brand ambassador and it, was, it looks like a lot of things that you were doing that kind of shows the the blueprint of mm-hmm. how you jumped into full-time oh, entrepreneurship. Really? So like brand ambassador, uh, internet marketer, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. just doing all these things. Right. Were you taking those steps and kind of just building it into your own corporation? I see. Yeah. So it, it's funny because like four, four or five years ago, I had a job. And when I was working this job, <laughs> so I'm working this job and I'm doing internet marketing for this job. Yeah. And then they would give me a like account, a PayPal account that I can like buy stuff for the business for. So I would buy Instagram pages for them, build them up, and then promote their products and et cetera. Right. So, but then what I would do is I would take that account too, and I like go buy a course to educate myself, buy another course to educate myself as well. So you know, this is not legal advice <laughs> to anybody at all, but I'm just being honest with you here. Yeah. So, um, but moral of the story was is that I was doing my job, but I was developing my work so like you know your job is like what you are doing but your work is what you're born to do right you see what i'm saying yeah. so like i was developing what the work of my life was going to be using my job to do so so how it manifested for me was i would do my job for seven days or you know five days and then i would be like hey do y'all think that i can work from home for one day and i'll take less pay but like, I would appreciate that. And I'll do the same work, but I'll take less pay. And then they were like, bet, cool. So then I would apply the information from the courses that I was learning on that one day. And then also at nighttime, too. So I would work from 9 to 5, come home, relax from 5 to 6. And then from 6 to 2 a.m., I just worked on my business. And I was able to get it to a point where I was making, like, 700 to to $1,000 a month from the business. And I was like, all right, that's enough to pay my rent because yeah. I was living in a one-bedroom apartment with, like, five people. And um, I paid for my rent, paid for my food. And then I was like, cool. So then I just quit the job and then went all in. So for me, I'm very risk. Of, I'm not risk. Like, I like taking risk. I'm, yeah. risk. I'm not risk averse. So like, I'm cool with it. So for me, it was like, all right, cool. I'm good. I got enough to pay rent and food. I don't need this. I'll figure out the rest later. But for someone else, that might not be the right advice for them, especially if you have like a family or something like that. You have to be a little bit more cognizant of your, you know, what you're doing. So that was pretty much the the journey there. It was had a job, built up a side income from what I was doing at the job, weaned myself off the job, and then went into full time entrepreneurship. And that was kind of the journey there. I like that. I like that. And getting into the full time and now, you know, support black colleges and you're taking that that leap again from moving from Houston yeah, over to Atlanta. Yeah. How was that move for you, you know, uh moving cross not cross country, but yeah, damn near. Pretty like, much. You know it was a twelve hour drive. Yeah. Bro. So um it was interesting. Like, so basically I just asked myself this. I was like, all right, do I have anything that's keeping me here in Houston? I didn't have any kids. I had my friends, but I felt like my family and my friends weren't necessarily on the same track that I was trying to go to, which is cool. Love them. You know what it is. So I was like, all right, the only thing that would really be keeping me here is like my mom. Cause that that's just me and her. It's been like that since I was, you know, since I was growing up and I was like, all right, Love my mom, but if I don't try this thing that I want to do, I'm going to regret that I didn't do it for sure, 100%. And I said, worst come to worst, like (laughs) worst come to worst, I'll just be in the exact same position that I'm in. So I said, all right, look, 
I know what this feels like, but I don't know what that feels like and to know where it can take me. So I basically was like, all right, mom, love you. I'm leaving. Drove down to Atlanta in my 2013 Nissan Altima. Um, six, 12 hour ride. I stopped six hours in, used the restroom. And then I was in the car and a sermon came on because I was listening to Wednesday Bible study. And then the sermon was just like, if you're thinking about jumping out there, jump out there. If you're thinking about traveling, just go. God will meet you in the middle, but he can't pull you to the other side unless you get in the middle. You got to meet him in the middle, and I promise you he'll take you to the other side. And I was like, all right, that's confirmation. So then, um, so it was scary, right? But at the end of the day, I felt like staying where I was was more risky than going to the unknown. I knew what I was doing would it produce as a result? And to be honest, I was doing a bunch of negative stuff too. So it was like, I was working a job, but doing some negative stuff on the side too. So it was like, I know that that leads to death or jail. Right. So it's really more risky for me to stay here and go to inevitable death or jail than to go to the unknown and drive to Atlanta. And I just made that choice and oh, just never looked back from there. I like that. And yeah. coming to Atlanta, you know, so much opportunity here, oh, man. the way you can network. I mean, I used to, I was here last year, but you know, I'm still coming back at this point because just the opportunities. Can right. you talk about how you're putting yourself out there? Because yeah. you know, some people could come to these big cities and these big markets, but not really take the next step. You right. know, of talking to or going to an invest fest, talking to these people, trying to reach out. What was that like for you yeah. um, individually, and then as the you know support black colleges? Um, for me personally, making these connections was all about becoming undeniable and me and my brother Amir talk about that all the time and it's because my the what I did was I said I'm going to be silent and work as hard as possible and then build something that's worth talking about mm. so I sat in my room for multiple years built support black colleges to 200 300,000 followers and millions of dollars in revenue and then I was like that was me. And then I was like, yo, I'm providing value to people now. So when I'm reaching out to someone, it's a much easier conversation than can I have something from you or whatever. And it's now, hey, I own this entity. We've built it to this much. I want to provide this value to you. Let's be cool and let's provide value to each other. So it was a much easier conversation for me. So when you're talking about, you know, how do you get into these circles or these, you know, networks or whatever, it's do something that's worth talking about and then go talk about it to people and bring value to those people and don't expect anything in return. Just do do something good, do it for other people for free, and that's it. Very simple. I like simple. how you get straight to the point. It's like, <laughs> hey, man, this is how it's done. Like, you, yeah. you give the play, and it's like you either follow it or not. So. Yeah, I mean, that, and then I, and I'll tell you a quick story because I think that it'll, it'll help you correlate, too. So I built Support Black Colleges, and then the gentleman that was running our ads, his name was Leon, and he had a client that was um, Mr. Two Weeks Out and Miss Two Weeks Out, so they have a business together whatever. So... He was like, yo, Justin, they're about to like pay $15,000 for some like consultation about Shopify. Can you just go over there and just like give them a little game, please? And I was like, all right, cool. I called uh, Jason. I was like, yo, where are you at? I want to help out. He's like, I'm at the loft. I drove over there, sat down and chopped it up with him for like three hours, just giving them game for, no, for nothing. And then I left and then Halani went on to do a million dollars her first year in business as an entrepreneur. And then I started to see Jason go to like... Um, like networking type things or whatever or like they would do like little masterminds every Friday and it would be like Jason, Him500, Neo, all of the homies. And I just texted Jason one day and I was like, y'all, y'all boys looking real old over there. Like y'all need some young blood in the in the building. I'm just messing with them. Yeah. And then I was like, y'all ain't got no young energy in the building. Like we got all the ideas, blah, blah, blah. So he's like, I'm going to get you into one, whatever. I'm like, all right, cool. So then a week goes by, they do another one. I didn't get an invite. I'm, I'm not sweating it because this is another trait that you got to build up too. Right. Where it's like, you think that you aren't being seen or you think that people are overlooking you you but you really just need to make yourself undeniable and continue to work because at one point they're not going to be able to deny you if you do something good enough so i just continue to build and then one uh one day i posted like a drop that we did we had like two thousand people order you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in a day and i posted on my story and then he sent it to rashad and troy from eyl and then he sent me back a screenshot of them saying like damn that's crazy blah 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 and i was like yeah y'all boys don't want to invite me to the to the masterminds though that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, nah, come through this Friday. So then I come through that Friday, and that's the day that I met Neo. I met him 500. I met 
um, Alex Good Energy, all of the homies, and then we developed a relationship from there because I was just giving as much value as possible. So that that was the the story and the journey of what it actually truly looks like to build something that's worth talking about, give game for free, not expecting nothing from nobody, and then show up to these environments where networking is going on. That's why I love your story too. Is like. I went to invest fest. A lot of people are like, how do I get these friend groups? But they're in the club on Friday. We were at invest fest on Friday. Yeah. So if you want to change your environment, you have to change the places you go to, to seek the people that you want to be around. So, um, you know, that that's just a general scope of all of that. <laughs> it was dope, super dope, and I, I like the way you know changing that environment. And one of the ways that I'm big on that too, because I'm reading like John Maxwell, Fifteen uh, Laws of Invaluable Growth, and all this stuff. Uh, the mentorship that you had was there any? Were you was it in books? Was it in the sermons that you listened uh, to? Was yeah. it personal? What what was that mentorship like for you? Where it's like you're building this mindset now yeah. of changing the environment of man. I, I can leave Houston and mm-hmm. I can be the same, you know, if it doesn't work out because that I don't think that's something that everybody has. It's something that you develop. And I know for me, I develop it through listening to personal development talks, listening to books or reading books. So, yeah, where, where did that come from for you? Uh, for me, that building the you know personal development really did come from books, too. And this is what happened to me. It was like I was doing some research and it was saying that the average CEO reads 50 books a year. Average American reads one book a year. I said, I want to be a CEO. The bare minimum I can do is just try to read a book a week. So my first book I ever read was called No Excuses by Brian Tracy. Mm-hmm. And I read that book and it really just changed my perspective and it changed my life and about discipline and like being consistent and all of those things. And from there, I just started to read every day. I became like really I, I don't even like to call it like when people are like, oh, you're thirsty. It's like, no, I'm very hungry. Like I'm hungry for knowledge. Yeah. Right? So I became very hungry for knowledge and that was becoming every day, hour a day. And then now I just started to develop those traits over time. So really, I think that it came from the mentorship came from books. It came from YouTube videos. It came from um, just watching others around. And then it just came from like immediate execution and i i kind of like liken it to this thing we call like the 72 hour execution rule so it's like you learn new information and you execute on it within 72 hours and if you don't i don't want to hear about it from you because you keep telling me about how you want to do x y and z in our friend group or whatever but i need to see some action on it you know as we say so you know shameless plug (laughs) (laughs) so i mean yeah that that was the that was really the mentorship it was honestly just a ton of books and then also i invest in myself very heavily so i'm not a person that tells people to invest in themselves even with us and our programs and I don't do it myself I started off with a hundred dollar coaching call then a thousand dollar course another thousand dollar course twenty five hundred five thousand dollar event seventy five hundred dollar event twenty five thousand dollar mastermind and now I'm graduating into the 50 k's and plus and that's just constantly on the monthly basis so um that's now it's just now my thing is how can I buy my time back by shrinking the ignorance that I have? So I do that through people. So I need the best to be doing stuff with me. You're the best at it. Here's 50,000 to skip five years of pain. So that's what my strategy has been. I love that. I love that. And even with the helping people in the aspect of that, you know, being the e-com king, and it's (laughs) really about just serving. It seems, you know, if you're looking at the page and trying to delve into who you are, it's just giving a lot of game. And Mm -hmm. you're going to all these platforms, million dollars worth of game, EYL, you know, talking to all these people. But it's really just knowledge that you're giving. And And I love that aspect of it because in the same regards of what we're trying to do here, I've learned from... And it's, it's crazy because the friend group that you're in was the group that I got to discuss and have conversations with at uh, Best Fest. Oh, dope. So it's like every you guys all have the same aspect, 72-hour rule. To be, he's like, yo, if he's telling us about how he got started with Off the Leash Media, the right, uh, podcast yeah, yeah. and everything. He's like, yo, I looked at it. I sat in the car and I got the LLC, got this. And it was like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, that makes total sense. Like, just action. Like, why would we sit here and keep talking about our dreams? But you ain't put no pen to paper. You right, haven't started. Yeah. So... Definitely just a kudos to you because, you know, we got to talk to them for about 30 seconds. But this is the thing because you just triggered something in my head. It's like this is the number one reason why I feel like people quit. And it's because they don't have enough skin in the game. So when I invested $10,000 into support black colleges, I couldn't quit because I was so heavily invested. So a lot of people, I feel like they quit because they try this new thing for six months and they don't invest any money into themselves. So they have no skin in the game and they just leave. So it's like, 
tried it for six months, didn't get rich, didn't invest nothing, so I'm cool. But for me, I try to invest as much as possible, as quick as possible, because I know that when you pay, you pay attention. Right. So when I jumped into this 25,000 mentorship like three months ago, he was like, you need a payment plan? I was like, well... I put 17,000 down right now. Let's go and put the 17 down. And then now it's like, you need to work this program. So that's kind of my, my strategy on it. I think people just quit because they don't have enough invested in it. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think that's big, even, um, personal testimony of like, yo, we, I'm coming down here from Virginia and it's right. like, yo, the, you, there's no turning back when you drive. And if you drive, it's not like you're flying with all this stuff. Right. So it's like, yo, you got to maximize what you're going to do while that's you're a down fact. here. That's so a fact. That's, it's kudos, man. But, uh, like I said, we were at Invest Fest and we talking to all these people. It was crazy. We didn't get to run into you cause it would have been a dope conversation yeah. as well. But the question that we were asking everybody and I, I, already can imagine your answer is going to be okay. great but what was the biggest failure that you had and the most impactful lesson that you learned from it the biggest failure that i had was getting into entrepreneurship and not practicing self-awareness first mm-hmm. the reason i say that is because a lot of people will build a lifestyle around their business and not a business around their lifestyle. So for me, I was looking at what everyone was doing and what was cool. And I said, oh, it'd be cool if I had a 10,000 square foot warehouse and 30 employees and all of this stuff. But I didn't step back and say, well, what skill sets do you have? What character traits do you have? And also what business models fits with the skill sets that you possess? I was just doing what looked cool. And then when I realized like, wow, I made this work because of sheer willpower, but it hit a cap because I didn't have the skill sets, the character traits, or the beliefs to Mm -hmm. even take this actual business model to the next level. And when I realized that, that's when I saw we made a ton of money, lost it all. Made it all again, lost it all again because I didn't have the character traits to run this business and keep the money that we had made. So the it cost me millions of dollars to learn those lessons and it was very painful you know going into a place where you have 30 employees and then you have to go tell everybody hey we don't have any money left so if you want to stick around then stay but it's just because you believe in us and you believe where we're going and then everyone leaves except for three people and you still have to get up and you know go at it the next day and going from coming from a place where it's like we got twelve thousand dollars in the bank account our payroll is 12600 coming out of pocket, 600 to meet payroll, then to go back and say, hey, I just came out of pocket to meet payroll. Stick around if you want. But if you left, I would understand. And then everyone leave. And then you go back to your room and then I take a shower and I'm just sitting in the shower like, how am I about to tell everybody we got no money left and this thing is over with? And then I was just like, man, but this is the biggest lesson I learned, though, is that who did I become building this business? And I had gained so many character traits, so many belief systems, so many relationships. And then I realized once I had millions of dollars and then I lost it all, the dollars never mattered. And what truly mattered was the relationships and the character traits that I had built because that's what you take into the next business and you blow it up very quickly. And that's all you need. So I think that was a lesson, just learning that like money doesn't matter in this game. It's who you become as you, you play the game. That's big, man. And I mean, even with the the reading of books and yeah. all this stuff, that's that's one of those things that if you if you catch on and understand, because a lot of stuff, it takes time for you to uh, understand those things. Right. So even like just listening to them, like you might hear it over and over again, but it doesn't click until you Bro. go through the pain. Like, I mean, transparent moment. And I'll put this out again. But yesterday. I had an SD card that was full oh, with wow. Jalil. So nothing was recorded on this audio. Oh, damn. So it was like, but I had a, I recorded myself and made a video and stuff. And I was just thinking I had a revelation. I was like, what better way to fail than to fail with somebody who's doing a media company? Right. With somebody who showed me how to fix my whole yeah, camera facts. and the camera settings. Exactly. So, yeah, I was bummed for like 30 minutes. I was like, man, I came down here. I did an hour oh, and a half and right. all this. But at the same time, it was like, Okay, now I understand. Right. Now, before y'all got here, I made sure everything was straight. Yeah, and then yeah. also, we didn't even know that I was going to be doing the podcast, too. So yeah. this is the thing, too, bro. What I realized, when when you invest in yourself, the biggest benefit is always the unknown. And the reason I say that is because this uh, my, my bro told me a story, and he was like, yo, Justin, I invested in this $50,000 mastermind, and when 
he got in, he got a bunch of game, but then he met this girl that was in the mastermind as well, and they were doing the same business. She then went on to become his wife. And he said, Justin, this is just a story to tell you that the money that you spend on these masterminds and that you invest in yourself and the time, what you get from it is going to be great, but the unknown factors are going to be what changes everything for you. So if I would have never invested that $50,000, if you would have never invested the time to drive down here and do something with Jalil, this interview would have never happened. Exactly. So that's the, I just wanted to say that because someone out here is thinking like, oh, I failed at this, but or I invested my time and it didn't work, but that's not the value. The value is the unknown that came from the time that you put in. And I always say this, like whenever I'm working at something and it's difficult, it's like no hard work goes unnoticed this bro the universe will not do you like that and i remember like carrying bins of hoodies up and down the stairs like when we first started and we didn't even think about dollies like we was just taking (laughs) seven big bins 60 gallons a piece just taking them up and down the stairs and stuff and i would just always constantly tell myself bro no hard work goes unnoticed keep putting in the hard work bro it's gonna pay off sometime it may not be now three years five years from now but if you keep working at it something's gonna work bro yeah and that was one of the mindsets that i had from yesterday and i mean just overall in general that you touching on is is a big piece of just like Yo, if I quit, it's over. Right. Like, you could have sat there and be like, man, I'm carrying all these bins and, right. like, I don't know what's going to come from it. <laughs> but I was like, man, I could I could quit right now. Like, I don't know what's coming. But the fact that I'm like, yo, let me just see it through. Right. What, to whatever extent it is. Right. Like, become that person. And, you, I mean, you touched on that as well. Just becoming the individual. Because once you do that, it's a whole different life. Now right. I'm not even thinking about thinking life the way I was because right. I'm a whole different person. And that's the thing. Like, I think a lot of people get that wrong too. And I did myself as well, where it's like the goal isn't to like do the habit. The goal is to become the type of person that actually does the thing. So I'm not trying to set a goal to read 10, 10 pages a day. I'm trying to become a reader. Talk and, about it. And the thing is, is that they also get it wrong too, because if they don't stay on, the track for like a few days they fall off and then they forget about it ever like ever trying to do it when in reality i think the most successful people they fail really fast but then they get back up with the same enthusiasm as if they just started again so it's never about like how long you fell off it's how fast you can get back on track and i look at it kind of like as a voting system so it's like i'm trying within 10 days to get 60% of the votes of doing this thing that I want to do for six days out of 10. And if I win the vote, then yes, I won and I am a reader. Right? That's my thing. You read Atomic Habits? You said what? Have you read Atomic Habits? I I didn't actually enjoy it that much. I read like the first few chapters and then after that, I just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of the same... I mean, like, what you said right there was pretty much what he was saying in the book. Oh, wow. Maybe I should have finished it. (laughs) (laughs) Where he's just talking about, hey, like, you're casting these votes for the person you want to become. Oh, wow. And the same thing of like, yo, the two-day rule. So Lethal Shooter, if you follow him, like, he's always saying, if you miss one, I'm not going to miss two, though. Right. And just taking that same aspect in life, like, yo, I might have missed today by not doing my diet, but I'm not going to make it a habit to miss again yeah. so i mean shout out to you hey author nah, coming soon huh? <laughs> i guess so <laughs> yeah man so speaking of like just the unknown and you know moving forward in life what's next for you i know you got a lot of things that you yeah. do um you know speaking on in these podcasts and having conference calls and meetings what's right. next in, in the life of justin for me i think it's just gonna be um Continuing to do more of the same thing I'm already doing. Like, you know me, single minded, hey, fast, yeah. tra- like focused. <laughs> so um, it's just going to be doubling and tripling down on what we're already doing. I'm having a lot of fun uh, coaching people and coaching coaches to impact more people, um, you know, scaling the businesses and just staying locked in on that. And I think that the, it's the unknown that comes with it because so many different opportunities have just been coming and it's taken a lot of discernment to like say no to a lot of them and right. say yes to what we continue to do so i think for me it's just going to be same thing more of it i like it man i appreciate you man it was a lot of value you gave today i hope so i think i think if the people that do listen uh take heed to what he's saying man there's a lot of good game good gems and uh overall just how to live a better life so justin appreciate you man man appreciate it man for sure until next time man it's just action (laughs) that was dope yeah